conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Everybody's having a pretty good start to your week. Uh, man, we are almost through uh, the first uh, month of the year. Time does not wait on no man, woman, or anything else. Time is moving, and what you do with your time here on this planet is going to write your legacy. What did you stand for? What did you contribute? What did you do to leave a lasting impression so heavy that people are still talking about you after you're gone? That's what a legacy does. A legacy leaves something that will speak of you after you're gone. That should be every man and woman's desire is to leave an imprint on this world so delible that it can't be shaken, it can't be forgotten. It's not to just serve self, it's not just to be, it's not just to simply exist or survive. It's to make an imprint, it's to be a difference maker, it's to be a catalyst, it's to be a voice, it's to be a model, whatever it is, that's the thing that you should be focusing on. Look, I'm not gonna go, but I, I, I can really talk about that now because there's so much there's such a great need uh, for people who are willing to live legacies. Um, but I want to talk to you today. And as you know, you see in the preemptive uh, intro, we are raising uh, funds to do the work we do in the community, work that we have done uh, consistently for decades, work we continue to do. Uh, whether you're talking about the massive amount of thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of research, uh, using that research for program development, program implementation, facilitation. Uh, we do everything from socializing young black boys, helping young black girls, dealing with domestic violence, incest, and other things, mental health, mental illness, uh, so much more. And we need your support. If you followed me, you know I've been around for a while. I'm not new to this. I didn't just pop up. I've been giving of myself my entire adult life. As a matter of fact, it started before I became an adult. But I've been giving of myself my entire adult life. In my imperfections, in my fallibilities, in my shortcomings, I've brought everything I've had to the table. And now I'm asking everybody who comes to this channel everybody who will watch this on some other platform if you believe in the work we do understand that that comes at a price understand that it comes beyond just basic sacrifice of time which is still costly it comes at a price our children need it as i'm about to talk about our broken people need it our households and families need it. The family has just been destroyed and we don't even have an appreciation for it anymore. We don't have a, a desire for black love. We don't see the importance of it. It's been, it, 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 it's been 
destroyed because we're not protecting it. All of these things are a part of what we do. We need your support. Look in the description box, click that link and give, 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 give. And if that's not the way you want to do it, the organization's cash app handle is also in the description box, but we are challenging you. At some point, we have to stop talking and we have to start doing, we've been doing for a while, but we're limited and we want to reach out beyond what we have been doing to do more. Uh, I am consistently being bombarded with young black males dealing with all kinds of issues, mental health. Our suicide rate is up across the board, regardless of gender or age, our suicide rates are up 30% over the last five years. 49% for young black males, 14 to 24. Our young girls, five to 13, lead the statistical category as a suicide. Yes, young black girls from five to 13 in that age group, we lead. That's a problem. And we sitting around and pretending that it's not there isn't going to make it go away. We have a responsibility to our children. We have a responsibility to the collective. We have a responsibility to ourselves. I just said it, to live a legacy, to live something, not just be here and exist, not just say, man, I'm just trying to make it through. You, you're not just leaving this world by itself. You're leaving your 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 progeny, your offspring, the the thing, the, pe the, the children you brought into this world. And, and whatever else you care about will still be here. You, you've got to care more. Uh, look, I, I, could, I could talk about this. We've got to do better. We simply have to do better. This is one of the ways that we are destroyed is because we don't unify. We don't come together. We expect everybody else to do it. Everybody's waiting on the next person to do it. Everybody's saying, well, they'll figure it out instead of giving. And yes, we're in the middle of a pretty nasty thunderstorm. Might lose power. I mean, we've had a bunch of stuff, but I'm working because that's what I need to be doing. So unless... Uh, I should even be able to go because I'm on a self-sustained device filming this and I filmed it like this on purpose. So even if the lights go out, I should be okay because the device has lighting. So I'm going to finish this one way or another. Uh, if, even if I'm in the dark, you shouldn't be. Okay, here, look. Talking about our children, uh, you've heard me about the important need to properly socialize young black males. Black men lead is a passion of mine because I know if we can socialize young black men, I know what the program does. I created it. I did the years of research behind it. We're not just talking about reducing uh, black male violence. We're talking about reducing dropout rates, incarceration rates, recidivism rates. We're talking about increasing uh, potential income earnings. We're talking about increasing uh, the uh, capacity to protect and stay with progeny and, 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 and proper family development and so many other things. We're even talking about an increase in the proclivity to own their own businesses. This is the power that we have. We're gonna have to stop thinking that there's gonna be a flash in the pan that fixes what's wrong in the black community. We're gonna have to have, as I've said now for more than 20 years, we're gonna have to have men who are willing to plant seeds. They may not live long enough to see come to fruition. And I've lived that. I've consistently built and planned and, and created uh, programs that will take time to bear fruit, but the fruit that it bears is long, longevity. It's, it's, it's something that's going to stand the test of time. We're creating a new generation of black blacks that will come out and be impervious to the suggestions of inferiority, impervious to the suggestions of being less than. And so I'm challenging everyone, man, we've got to do something, but look, when it comes to our children, what we are missing is this subtle encroachment of pedophilia and ephebophilia. Um, we often ascribe a, a ped pedophilia to almost any act where an adult is sexually drawn to or misappropriate with a minor. Uh, but that's a mis... Uh, a that's a... a uh, a false application, a misapplication of the term. There are actually two forms of uh, sexually inappropriate mindsets, behaviors, thoughts, and, and acts that constitute 
concern for minors. The first is pedophilia, the other is ephebophilia. Pedophilia is being when an adult is sexually attracted to a prepubescent minor, meaning that they are literally a kid. They haven't even started puberty. They haven't start, started developing in any way. They are at their most innocent state. And that's a pedophile. That's pedophilia. Ephebophilia is equally uh, screwed up, but it applies to post-pubescent and adolescent minors. These are children who have gone through puberty and have started to develop sexually. So for girls, they will more than likely have breasts and probably start to develop hip area and things of that nature. And young boys, deeper voices, uh, more muscular, and starting to move towards uh, the physical presentation of manhood. Same thing with, with females. It's a ephebophilia, but it's still being attracted to someone who's a minor um, in, in an adolescent stage. Whether we're talking about either, we have a problem. We definitely have a problem in the area of pedophilia. Uh, there's a push among pedophiliacs that and pedophiles that um, are challenging the common standard of what's acceptable and they are pushing it at an alarming rate and as someone who has written on propaganda someone who has written on uh, the ability to influence social uh, standards norms and standards are what govern the conscious of an individual and a society what is considered to be normal and standard will say okay when you go around this over this or under this there is a violation of the standard you want to maintain the behavior so when a person has a standard that says harming someone is wrong if they harm someone their conscious bothers them and they feel bad about it and their conscience will govern them and cause them not to even do it but when the norms and standard have been corrupted what triggers the conscious changes and when you constantly see a bombardment of what was once absolutely unacceptable the natural progress of the, the natural neurological process of the brain is to start to see it as normal. It's called normalization. You can normalize what is wrong until it becomes right. We've seen it happen in so many other areas. I'm not going to get into it now. Things that were unacceptable. Just think about television. For those of you who are old enough, think about television in the 70s and the early 80s. Now think about television now. Things that you can see on regular television now, you had to have that extreme cable uh, uh, back in the early 80s uh, to see it. It was only on the HBO that you could see it. You know, now it's common mainstream. Things that you would see as far as affection, things that you would see as far as how much a person's wear, what type of uh, sexual innuendos would play out on television. Uh, so many things have been normalized to the point now the line has become blurred and what you have is you have this cascade of okay that's not that bad so we're just gonna let it go that's not that bad so we're just gonna let it go until you look up and now what's following the trend is something that is extremely bad but it's coming in on a cascade of declining values a cascade of declining uh standards one th things we used to absolutely not except things we used to abhor now we are sitting up and saying it's not that bad it's okay that's their business all of these different things the problem is anything that moves within uh the range of scope of your gates in other words you can see it and hear it has the ability to affect you more importantly when it's aimed at your children it has the ability to affect them and what i'm telling you is i'm seeing over and over again the push in media the push in legal precedence in so many other ways that they are literally looking and, and, and it sounds absolutely crazy until you look at what's going on out there. It sounds crazy, but they're looking to legalize pedophilia. It's, we're looking to say that our children don't deserve a childhood, that they don't deserve to be able to grow up and mature in a way that they're able to now make decisions that will literally impact the rest of their lives. Now, adults 
who are sick and in their own mind looking to satisfy only themselves are going to make this decision for those children. I'm seeing over and over again, and I'm going to tell you something. Here's something that we need to do. We need to be more aware of what's going on in our families. And in situations in which there are children in bad situations and child protective services are getting involved and they are talking about removing the children from the home, we as a family need to step up. And I don't care how inconvenient it may be, we need to step up and say, okay, we're gonna take the kids. We're gonna go back into the village mindset. We're gonna take the kids. Here's why. One of the most dangerous places for a child is in foster care, is in the protection of child protective services after they've removed a child from the home. Foster care is the breeding ground for sex trafficking and human trafficking. That is where the, the funneling of a large number of these young youth that we find on the street in, in the sex trafficking world come from. And so they're not really being sa uh, saved. They're just being moved into a, a different type of danger. And it's our responsibility to ensure that that's not what's happening. Now, let's get back to this. You look at some of the shows. Look at some of the stuff that's being pushed. Look at some of the stuff that even gets by on YouTube that'll pinch me for almost any freaking thing I say that'll snatch my channel in a heartbeat for something that I stand to believe on that's not bothering anybody else that doesn't want to be a part of it. But you look on here, and there's the pushing of this. I saw a picture of a show, and I don't know where it was from. It was a, it was a still shot, but it was of a, a, a Caucasian male, and he had uh, several Caucasian females in the background. They were all dressed in costume like uh, something going on, something, some kind of festive, but it was a little kid. Kid couldn't have been no more than six. And the guy had a microphone and he was asking the kid a question. And the kid was talking to the microphone, but he had the microphone coming out from his crotch area for the kid to talk to. Now, that's highly suggestive. Anybody that understands anything about sex knows what that is. Now, whether the kid has gotten to the point where they've seen it enough to know or been exposed to enough to know is irrelevant. The thing is, the kid is being groomed. More importantly, everybody watching that is being groomed. Everybody watching that is being reprogrammed slowly. Now, what will happen is most people are going to see it. And because it's not an actual sexual act, are going to talk about, man, that's screwed up. Man, that's messed up. Man, uh, man, that's... Uh, but they're not going to see how it's playing out. And eventually it'll evolve into something more and more like the real thing until it is the actual real thing. And we'll look up 20 years from now, 10 years from now, maybe. And this stuff will be happening on regular television. And we'll be going, how do we get here? What's going on with the side? And we'll be talking. It's because we don't make stands when we need to. It's because we don't protect our children. The thing is, I've said this for how long? We can't continue to say our children are our future and we don't protect them. That means we're not protecting the future. That means that we're not setting up our children to win. That means that we're not creating the proper environment for them to do better than we did. We are not doing our job. We are not handling our responsibility. We must call a spade a spade. We must speak out against pedophilia and ephebophilia. We must stand up and say, not on our watch. We must guard the gates of our children. It's our responsibility to guard their gates. It's our responsibility to stand up and say, not on my watch. It's our responsibility to say there will be consequences for violating our children. It's our responsibility. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to speak out. It's time for us to make moves. This is a real challenge. This is a real problem. So my challenge to you is that we stand up and that we come together and that we re-establish the village, that we develop the right environments to cultivate the minds and the psyches and the self-images of our children so that they stand strong, so that they stand powerful, so they're able to move forward. This is my challenge. And I'm going to ask that you support the work we do. I'm gonna ask that you challenge yourself to reach inside 
of who you are and give because it's not going to happen at the level we need it to happen without us coming together as a community, without us looking beyond what's going on. At some point, we have to stop placing the finger of blame, pointing the finger of blame. Not that it's not places to point it, but that does nothing for change. The change is going to come when we make our minds up to do something different, when we decide that we are no longer going to accept the status quo, when we decide that we're going to do something beyond what we have been doing and that we are going to be a force of elevation and power in our sphere of influence. That's the challenge now. So I'm going to challenge you, support what we're doing, but be aware of what you're seeing and what you're watching in movies and television, even in these animated series, check them out. It's hidden in there. It's, it's, it's all in the animated series. So that's my challenge to you. So again, support the work we do, be on your A game, be aware. On this note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.